Greetings, friends. My name is Colrain. My pronouns are they, them. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are returning, thank you so much for your patience with me as I haven't posted in a couple months here. Um, the last time I posted was in October of 2022, which doesn't seem like that long, but um, I know that it is quite a while to not connect with you all as my audience, so I'm just grateful that you are back um, and that we're connecting again. So, the theme of this video today is going to be like some guidance or some help through a transition period in your life when you feel that you're transforming. Um, at this time, there's a lot of transformation that is just in the collective as the day that I'm filming this, Pluto, our planet of the you know, deepest subconscious is moving into the sign of Aquarius, which is, you know, bringing us together through humanitarian type leadership, breaking um, old systems, outdated beliefs and traditions, paving new pathways since it is an air sign and it does bring in that emotional aspect to connect us to that higher spiritual transcendence and um, emotional well-being. So, um, Part of why I'm explaining a little bit of this is because this deck that you see in front of you is actually the reason I've taken a break from my YouTube for a while. Um, this is my project that I created titled Apocalyptic Theater. Um, <clears throat> you can see the book right here is the guidebook. Um, here I'll show you the cover. This is my personal copy so it's been seen some better days um, and I love it quite deeply. So here's the cover art. Um, this is all watercolor and ink, but um, in its original form. Um, but I wanted to be able to bring this here to you to show you this tool that I've created um, for this time period because this is an academic project as well. There is about 380 pages of my own um, like scholarly research um, and then my own of course interpretations and philosophies and observations through different spiritual and religious traditions um, but the deck does focus on the life of Jesus since I am a queer person I feel that it's really important for queer people to be included in spiritual interpretation and spiritual spaces and we need to be able to have our voices and view the divine through a queer lens and also not even just putting that label of queer onto it but through a loving lens that um, allows for us to have conversations with each other about you know the grounded everyday realities of our life as well as these larger collective um, group experiences that we uh, experience as we learn to love and harmonize and also face conflict with one another so that's my little spiel <laughs> about my intentions behind the deck. Um, if you've already chosen a pile, I'm sure, you know, go ahead to the the timestamp in the description that will match the pile that you've chosen. So I'm going to start by introducing the piles here. Um, we have pile one with the Themis card. Um, this is card eight in this tarot system with the Amazonite um, stone. This has a nice blue, like, watery sheen to it. So for pile two, we have Crepusculum. This is the 18th card in this tarot system, along with the rainbow smoky quartz. And for pile three, this is the Terrus Destructa card. This is card 16 in this tarot system. And Along with it is this fossil, or crystallized fossil. So, I will see you in your pile. Hello, pile one. Um, welcome to your reading. So, in case you did not get through that intro, I'm going to give you a brief description. Um, and in case you did, it won't be too much extra for you. So. Um, here is Apocalyptic Theater. That's what I'm going to be using today. This is my tarot project. Um, and I'm going to start with this card that came out for you. Um, this is the Themis card. 
And this is the eighth card in this tarot system. Themis is the Latin word for justice. Um, and it is also connected to the Greek Titaness um, Themis, who is um, a guardian of justice and represents that kind of balance, um, the, the rebalancing of like natural forces. So um, there's something about like uh, you making a commitment that is involved in this card. Um, whatever transformation you're going through is happening because of a decision that you've made, basically. Um, so this deck focuses, it's a, basically a religious studies project or religious scholarship in some form um, to try and include different voices into religious narratives and change the way that they, you know, influence our personal and political lives. Um, that's like my intention behind some of this. So this stage actually represents when Jesus uh, has the baptism moment and there's like kind of representation of this um, moment of anointment. So something that I want to bring in for the description of this card is something from the guidebook. So we're going to flip to the eight card right here. This is um, an art book as well and so we're going to look at what's going on in this card. So um, here at the front you can see there's a description that says Jesus baptism represents moral order and universal laws. The surrender to the process of anointment, the product of physis, which would be the Virgin Mary, and Magister Arcanorum, uh, the teacher of the secrets, or John the Baptist. And this physis is nature, so nature and the teacher of secrets. Um, they meet via the element of water. So this card is talking about um, the inner ability to teach oneself and unlock secrets by accessing and interpreting a personal divinity while meeting the laws of nature and the respect that one has for cycles, their connection to the earth, their connection to um, what their spirit is calling them to be. And so that's kind of what the baptism represents. And farther into the chapter, um, because it is a religious kind of study, uh, I do bring in aspects of, you know, the history of Judaism and what a baptism meant in Jewish, t like, uh, culture and um, times before Christianity. And a baptism, um, in some subsects, was this kind of anointment of a vessel rather than a person. And when Christianity becomes a, you know, sure-footed movement later, it becomes something where it's, you know, a symbolic gesture towards people. And so um, it wouldn't have necessarily been called a baptism. It would have been more of like a cleansing. But this does represent a period of cleansing, um, of transforming one's material reality as the disco ball kind of represents this kind of fractal reality that um, where light kind of, you know, <laughs> has that, again, that fractal um, aspect to it where it fragments and pushes through your current reality and so there's something about um, a light that you call forth that illuminates something and then shows the kind of um, alternate pathways that you can head down and so there's something about this this card where there is um, maybe a lot of chaos because of this sword and I'm thinking of I included this specific image because the sword uh, I believe Jesus says, I forget the verse, but it's in, it's quoted in the book. Um, Jesus says, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And so there's something about, like, if we read that through the lens of um, the writer Wade Coleman Smith, interpretations of tarot, a sword can represent the mind, mental clarity, um, sharpness of tongue, being able to communicate effectively. Um, and with 
passion as well. And there's something about this which is um, reminding you that at this point in your life, you're seeking peace by listening to the chaos that your heart has invited around you. Um, so I want to get some more cards. I know that that was quite a lengthy intro on one card, but I wanted to give it a proper introduction because this is a pretty cool card, at least in my eyes. Because um, I do think that there's something about justice that talks about justice that's not just a selfish um, desire. And so there's something about you that maybe you're not even um, at this point fighting for yourself anymore. Or you've learned to fight maybe your own battles. Or I don't know if I want to use the word fight, but there's something about, you know, persevere through your battles. Learn how to navigate them. Um, whereas at this point... Um, you know, it's not just about you anymore, if that makes sense. So there may be things happening for your career that are really confusing or you feel like, you know, opportunities maybe um, are just on your horizon. And so that's part of that transformation energy for you. Um, the Petra Cubica card coming out underneath, this is the fourth card. Um, and this is in that traditional uh, role of like the father, um, as well as just a role of like a healthy, grounded um, sense of like self and willpower and commitment and sacrifice towards the things that we know that we want to bring into our lives in the future. So the Petra Cubica here, Petra Cubica means cubic stone. So Petra stone Cubica is cubic. So it's talking about this very solid geometric um, experience of stability, um, a foundation from which you can grow from. And so pairing that with the Themis energy is very interesting because not only have you been um, primed to carry this uh, energy into the world and you've opened yourself and agreed to it and allowed for a spirit to begin to move through you, if that's how you see um, yourself being animated in the world by, you know, carrying spiritual energy through yourself, or whether this be understanding that um, something deep within you is being uh, awoken or being summoned from within your own struggle or desire for balance within your life. And so that's getting you to build this strong foundation and giving you the ability to navigate yourself. Um, something about the Petra Cubica stage that I feel <clears throat> is standing out to me as my throat is getting kind of blocked here. Uh, let me get a drink. Um, <clears throat> something about this stage is that this person doesn't rely on other people to tell them what's right or wrong. And, you know, sometimes the shadow aspect of this can be someone who is domineering and um, walks over others' opinions, but I feel that because it's paired with the Themis energy, there's something that is, you know, because of these roots, very grounded, um, very wholesome, and I, I also, maybe wholesome's not the right word, but there's something about, like, naturalistic, like, it's almost like the natural order for you to be able to find your voice at this time and have other people um, honor and respect that, and I feel that there may be some adversity or some pushback to you starting to build this and get your voice, um, out into the world as well because the Petra Cubica figure can be somebody who um, really has to overcome a lot of challenge to make um, something for themselves independently. So it may be that um, the communities that you're currently a part of don't want to see what you're building um, come forward or there are communities maybe not your community but there are people who belong to different groups or identify in different subsects of um, society that may not agree with you and it may feel like even just the projected experience of knowing that that kind of resistance is out there may um, sometimes get you out of that uh, mindset of feeling like what you're doing is um, possible, but also a sacrifice that is um, will have fruit, if that makes sense. Like a sacrifice that will allow for things to um, uh, get cleared, like clear the air. That's kind of the phrase that's coming to me in this moment, is that there's something where you really feel that what you're doing is almost like a cleanup crew. Like, um, I don't know if a lot of you are really into 
um, like, for some reason, city planning is coming up for me, um, but there's something also maybe about, like, getting invested in, like, the natural environment or some, something that has to do with, like, health, um, taking care of one's body, um, that kind of a thing. There's something about this that feels like, um, you see a need and you want to tend to it and step in and kind of guard and protect this pathway that you see humanity heading towards and you want to really guide people towards um, information that is going to be helpful because the Petra Cubica um, when I was researching into Joseph and that figure of you know the father <clears throat> of Jesus I wanted to look at how father fatherhood can be limited by a social role but also can be expanded through the ability to lean into those traits of you know caring for others and um, making a space for others um, holding others in a high regard and allowing them to flourish when you provide someone with the proper resource and so there's something about that that I feel like is coming through for you is that you're able to really embody this energy of the Petra Cubica figure who you know doesn't really control what other people do with the information that you give them um, or the resource that you give them but you simply um, allow people to pass through and find their own stability as well and so there's something really grounded and balanced about that and i'm really enjoying that for you so <laughs> thank you pile one for what you're doing for the collective okay and we have a couple more cards coming out um just to see um, and i am feeling like they're kind of being pushed this way so it's something that's kind of propelling you into the future and I feel like that that's really where your reading needs to head right now because um, we kind of got an understanding of where you're at right now that impasse you're almost um <laughs> uh, bursting yourself through it's like that like pain of like the um you know the birthing pains and then you know infants can't begin to really get that momentum to grow or um see a lot of substantial like uh care for themselves or uh, in I don't know why the words are um escaping me it's like that um like a homeostasis a, a being that like can perpetuate its own life force um what you're doing right now is only beginning and so there's something about it that's why the page of air starts here there's something about it where you're gonna have to take certain steps with yourself almost as if you were like caring for an infant if that makes sense and I I really do think that this is um timely uh for when I'm filming because um we just went through the Ostara period, the spring equinox, um, or fall equinox if you're in the southern hemisphere, but there is something about, like, us transitioning, regardless of where you are. Um, for me, since I live in the northern hemisphere, and I do, um, identify and practice my Celtic pagan beliefs of following the equinoxes and the, um, the Celtic savats, uh, I just celebrated that and I do feel like that experience can be quite painful because we really do have to let our um you know previous comfort whether we see that as the womb space or not <laughs> um like that infant like we have to really you know experience the that catalyst of being um self-sufficient um and that doesn't mean that we're only on our own. We're still interdependent and interrelated. It's just this relationship to everything transforms and becomes different and becomes something that, you know, you're allowed to make the conscious decision to say yes or no. The consent is there. You're allowed to consent to these things. And that's what I feel that the page of air is representing here because there's a lot of... Um, kind of these dark ribbons that are on the side of the card that they represent like kind of overcoming these toxicities of the mind and the heart and purifying that and not in the sense of like a toxic like purity like you know we need to not be contaminated at all but it's more of um an alignment if that makes sense so purity in the sense of like returning to an innocence returning to a sense of um spontaneity um uh centeredness um, coming from a place of pure inspiration 
and that's what I feel that the lotus represents because again we have the you know the blade imagery that almost mimics I have never noticed this um, but the the Themis blade and the blade on the page of the of air they um, are kind of bringing about that sense of like mental clarity <clears throat> There is something that I do feel like you really need to share because <laughs> my throat is just like getting blocked and blocked. And when this <clears throat> happens for me in a reading, this is an indication to me, like a body signal that's saying that um, <clears throat> the mind has done its work. It needs to integrate down into the body through the breath. And the breath needs to expel and move energy. And so there's something about you taking this energy, since this um, figure is looking and placing their hand towards what's going on, receive the energy from, you know, committing yourself and envisioning this future and laying the foundation for it. And then you're going to begin to distribute it as well. So here are the Corona Magica card. Um, this is the 21st slash 22nd, depending on, um, <laughs> I just like the number 22, so I have it labeled as 22, but technically it is the 21st, the final major arcana card. Corona Magica means the magic crown. This talks about the enlightenment. This talks about the peace. This talks about connecting beyond the physical with where we're supposed to be, you know, uh, rooting ourselves holding on to and calling in that legacy that is beyond the present moment um and connecting to the future in a really healthy way so once you do begin to distribute this there's going to be a period of peace a period of rest where once you've um you know put out what you had to say uh communicated in a way that feels really whole and authentic to your vision what you want to create in this world you're going to have the ability to really absorb yourself. And I know that's kind of a strange, like, phrasing, but there's something about this that does feel um, quite like like um, the Ouroboros suggests to us here, that self-consumption, where you take yourself in, you really soak in um, what you've just set in motion and give yourself the ability to, like, in any good relationship, reflect and... Um, respond from a place of like good boundaries <laughs> and like taking your time to not be obsessed you know and so I feel like this is a really like positive energy of like what do I really want to see fruit because the olive tree here um, a really important part of Palestinian and um, the entire like Mediterranean culture is this olive tree that, you know, roots in a rocky environment, ro roots in a place where, you know, it shouldn't, it ha doesn't have any business, you know, being such an abundant, life-giving plant. But when you plant it 60 to 80 years later, you get that harvest and it's for, you know, the next generation. So there's something here about reflecting on what your, like, long-term purpose is going to be and allowing yourself to not be rushing to get there. Um, so we land here on this night of water, which I do want to bring in the dice aspect of the deck, which is another um, feature that I wanted to kind of implement into tarot, um, not relying so much on the pip cards. I want to use the numerology of the ace through ten journey through the suits to help us to understand and unlock more about the identity. So the identity that you're going to be stepping into um, at the final like stage of this transformation or whatever, you know, energy point it's almost like a checkpoint in your life it's going to be this night of water energy um and so let's see kind of where that's going to take you and there's an eight so for a lot of you this definitely has to do with your career the eight here um and more more so your than just your career it's more of like the value and the worth that you provide because the eight is also kind of like that infinite um you know looping what comes around comes back around what goes around comes back around what goes around comes back around and that kind of a thing of like interdependence interrelation um being at one with everything around you especially mimicking that corona magica i can't imagine you going from this energy into anything other than something that feels quite emotionally in tune and spiritually um in tune as well because this night of water i do feel like talks about using your intuitive um and uh 
good sense of decision and judgment making here, especially starting out with that Themis card. There's something about um, justice and the judgment that, that like comes through and your ability, your ability to really um, call the shots in your own life from a place of balanced emotional um, reconciling and uh, kind of tempering that's going to really like push you forwards and give you the stability that you really need. I think that the eight is just mimicking that beginning number eight of the Themis card and showing that you're going to rebalance your emotional life through this transformational process. The Knight of Water is someone committed to um, really working through their shadow, working with the emotions, working with the parts of life that are sometimes... Um, completely cast out because they're not convenient to everyone and so you're potentially going to be working with people who really um, have felt dejected um, and like cast aside and there's something about that that is really going to um, help you to feel like strong compassion for people in a way that will be very healing for you because I'm noticing these fish kind of like swirling around with each other at the center of this little um kind of sorry <laughs> contained like terrarium pond in the middle here and so it's like you're able to like see the stillness that is above this kind of um dance that is being done underneath and so you're able to because you're coming from this place of um stillness you're able to provide clarity to others as well, even as there's kind of this like um, emotional alchemy that's happening around you. And so I think that um, you're going to be able to find the eye of the storm a lot easier and like remain within that so that you can see exactly why that um, cycle is kind of perpetuating in that way. I'm seeing almost like that hurricane type of an energy um, here. So, yeah. I think that's all I'm seeing for you, Pile One. Um, it was a really beautiful honor and blessing to read for you today. I really uh, hope that that was empowering and grounding and uh, helped you to see your life and the energy that's in it in a different way. So if you are interested in looking at this um, project, which was published through Curious Publishing, um, you can look at the links in my description box that will be to the website, um, apocalyptictheater.card, with two R's, dot co, um, to view the deck, and curiouspublishing.org, big shout out to Curious Publishing for making this deck um, happen, and the book happen as well, um, and that will also be available for order through there. So, um, I will see you in another video, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm sending so much love your way. Bye. Greetings, pile two. If you selected this rainbow, uh, smoky quartz, then this is your beautiful reading. So that rainbow smoky quartz always gets me because it's just so full of rainbows. It just reminds me of, you know, that energy of like, not caring what anyone else thinks and expressing yourself so fully and purely and beautifully without barriers, without boundaries. So <laughs> there's something beautiful and magical about your energy pile too. Um, this Crepusculum card, this is in kind of um, the Rider Waite Coleman Smith decks placement of the Moon card in the Major Arcana. Crepusculum means twilight in Latin. Um, the reason that there's a Latin name on this card is because this major arcana journey um, is themed with the life of Jesus, and Jesus was an oppressed Jewish person living in the imperialist Roman Empire, which was colonizing pretty much all of Europe um, during that time period, and so um, I wanted to kind of revive that story. <clears throat> And I did that through this. So Crepusculum, um, I feel this name gives us a different insight into this energy. Um, twilight. Twilight is that time of transition already. And so because this um, reading is themed with that energy of transformation um, and, you know, what that's bringing into your life, I do feel like the Crepusculum energy is right on par and it shows that 
Um, there's a lot of shadow work that you've been doing. There's a lot of relationship work, connection to others, um, intuitive work. Intuitive work, I almost feel, is like pretty much entirely our ability to distinguish our own um, path from the like truth and path and spiritual truth and um <laughs> sorry spiritual alignment as well of others i don't want to keep repeating truth but um i hope you understand what that means so the the intuition when when we follow that it gives us the ability to connect to ourselves authentically and therefore connect to others authentically so what the corpusculum card can show us sometimes is where we need to connect to ourselves more genuinely um, and shows when we're giving ourselves the ability to explore compassion. Um, sometimes for a lot of you, this is going to be, you know, dealing with the issues of others that reflect to you things that you want to refine about yourself. So a lot of you are really going through strong spiritual transformations where you understand what the purpose of your relationships are in your life and how they, um, are allowing you to develop like, you know, things like your home life. Um, a sense of safety in your body, um, a sense of safety within community spaces as well, like the type of people that you invite into your life and make into friends, um, the people you work with in partnership with in business relationships as well. So there's a lot coming through in that card. Um, also, I want to give you some little information about the deck um just in case you did not get a chance to watch the entire intro that's totally fine i get it we're busy but um this deck i created uh using watercolor and ink pens and this was a project that was published through curious publishing um shout out to curious publishing uh thank you for your support um and this deck is actually available for purchase through their website, so curiouspublishing.org, and I'll have everything linked in the description as well as a website that includes um, everything that I've set up for the deck and a preview of it as well. So anyway, um, back into your reading. I want to read a little bit from the guidebook for you, and that's why I wanted to give you a bit of insight into what the project is. Um, and so let's go find the Crepusculum cards. So the book is also like kind of an art book so you can get a better look at the art image <laughs> and so I'm gonna look for whatever kind of pops out for me for you mm. let's see yeah right here okay so it says this card emphasizes that every relationship has its rhythms Crepusculum reminds us to remain open and okay with our objective reality. Everything is relative, and just like the moon, our lives will come back around, waxing and waning as well. As this is often a card of magic and fantastical spiritual experience, when this card appears to describe our relationships, it reminds us that we have the opportunities to surrender to the process and to the magic within. Facing our fears is the only way to connect with ourselves and therefore with those around us more vulnerably and with a healthy outlook. So it's kind of interesting that that one passage really does um, <laughs> almost reiterate what I was saying to you. And that was a really like intuitive feeling that I got with the card. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> it's just uh, wanting to repeat itself. I do feel like there are quite a few people around you, Pile 2, that you're in the process of really analyzing your relationship with these people. You can probably conjure up at least three or four, like, in your own mind at this point. I feel like there are quite a few, um, just connections that, even if they're, like, casual ones, um, they, these may even be people that you're not actively talking to, like family members, um, people from the past that you're just really wanting to think about um, quite a bit right now. So, but there's something about, um, because of this emphasis of the, ooh, and I am getting a pain in my back. Um, yeah, there's something about, like, you carrying the weight of other people's expectations, um, and what they want for your life. So let's start to get some more about what this transformation is doing for you. So can I get a look at 
more of what's happening in Pile 2's life, please. Spirit guides of Pile 2, um, higher consciousnesses that are surrounding Pile 2, aiding them in their life. We have a lot of water energy, which is not surprising <laughs> since we literally have fish here. And this is a card ruled by the sign of Pisces. So you may have quite a bit of Pisces or Cancer as well with that moon energy um, being involved there. The lunar energy, um, Gnosis right here is also ruled by the moon. And then these are two court cards that are from the sign of water. So there's something about maybe even the cycles of the moon, um, the influence that the moon has over the consciousness of the like human population that really influences you and affects your energy levels as well pile two so a lot of my pile twos you may be um someone who practices with the moon or a part of your spiritual practice is in connection with the moon if it is not and you're interested in it i would definitely recommend checking it out just at the very least, like if it's intimidating to work with the moon for you because of all of the, you know, information that is out there about what's, you know, the right thing to do in spirituality, just like learn the the phases or the cycles of the moon. Like learn how it goes from the new moon to the waxing moon to the full moon to the waning moon and then back to the new moon and just think about and maybe even meditate on that kind of process of like appearance and then turning back within and hiding. Um, there's something about it I feel that maybe even may connect with the most recent um, season in the northern hemisphere. We're kind of emerging from that winter season so there may be a lot of things that um, or even events in your relationships that occurred over the last uh, couple months, if you are watching this um, around the time that I'm posting it, where you're going to recognize that there are these cycles or these patterns that you're really being called to um, transform. So the Gnosis card here, this is the dream angel. This um, is the angel that visits both Mary and Joseph before Jesus is born and lets them know that something is going to happen that's very powerful in their lives and so I take this in a metaphorical sense to represent our psychic abilities our abilities to connect to the other side um, and that's another thing that actually I'm realizing is um, connected to this so the crepusculum card talks about you know the path our ancestors walked the path of blood and not to say that in a morbid way but I do feel like I have quite a few of my macabre uh, gothic type you know, we love the, the realm of the darker things um, coming through. And I do feel that you're going to resonate with this idea of being able to draw on our ancestry to learn and to transform those, you know, generational patterns and those cycles. And I know you've probably heard this before, but I do feel like um, there's something that you can do to, like, actually summon them or, you know, bring some ancestors that you do trust um, into a ritual with you to help you to um, prepare yourself for whatever um, is lying ahead or whatever, you know, web you need to weave here. Because I'm being called to the hand that is touching this web that has the sun. So there's some kind of thing that's going to be illuminated to you through these cycles that are happening in your life and that allow you to turn into this weaver. <laughs> As we see, the spider is almost, you know, dangling from this darkness around the moon. So, um, I also feel that this is bringing us up into this, because I feel that these two court cards are kind of um, brought together. They're almost paired in this reading, and um, I'm going to use the dice. So, part of this deck is that there is a 10-sided dice that is included with each card set to remedy the fact that there is no pip cards in the deck. So when you pull um, any court cards, what I like to do is I will, you know, roll the dice and whatever number it lands on, I will use my knowledge of numerology to tie it into the themes that are in here. So since they're both in the suit of water, it's easy for me to do this for the both of them together because there's no other um, stage of like element that I need to kind of weave in. It's a little easier. So let's see. It's kind of, I don't know why it like landed with the Ada, but I, I really saw the zero there first. So I'm feeling that that's more of the energy of a 10, maybe the eight and the 10 together. 
Um, but I am feeling more of the 10 energy come through there. So there's something about, yes, this, the tens represent that full complete cycle and eights represent our, you know, cycles again, cause they kind of can represent that karmic balance or that ability of giving, um, you know, receiving what we give back or what we give out. Sorry. <laughs> the advisor and the knight together represent this stage because I use the hermetic principles and the study of these cards to show the night is when we gain this um, bridge from the subconscious into the conscious and begin to make conscious decisions that align in this case with the emotional, psychic, and intuitive promptings and feelings in relationships. Whereas the advisor builds that power from within because they've bridged that subconscious and conscious communication and they have the ability to empower themselves through emotional experiences and then stand in their own emotional sovereignty as well the advisor represents this internal voice this internal power that we draw on and we um, then give to ourselves from that place and can um, see through the personal or the hidden or the underbelly of the society basically so whereas um the royal would be the highest position of the court cards in this deck the royal um of water is someone who's much more involved in the uh 3d expression of power and expression of emotion and balancing of that performance of the emotion the advisor is much more concerned with discerning what is going on without explicit communication if that makes sense this is the person who can look at someone and um read their intention without them speaking that kind of thing this is a more internalized expression and reading of power that is filtered through an internal sense of discernment what is good for me what is my emotions telling me um with love and respect for other people having their own similar sovereignty if that makes sense and so there's something where you're pulling into this space of sensitivity that is almost overwhelming, but it's also quite grounded and wise. And I feel like a lot of you are really starting to set boundaries up in your relationships that you've never been able to like set up before. And this is like a complete um, ability of yours to recognize that your psychic abilities or your spiritual abilities or your emotional abilities, however you see that, they're extremely valuable and they have something um, that is important for you in terms of clearing the way for yourself in your life to enjoy it, to be able to express yourself fully, and to be able to um, not let your energy get drained or taken from you at all. <laughs> and so there's something about finding emotional like happiness, because if we were going to think of this like in terms of another card appearing it may even be like seen as like the ten of cups or ten of water that would be something where you know you're reaching an emotional fulfillment or you're striving towards some kind of um sense of like joy and happiness or at least a place of equilibrium where you know that there is um a seed of emotional safety within the relationships and the people that are around you and that they understand who you are on a deeper like more spiritual core level um and that comes only through sensitivity and vulnerability as this person's heart is very sensitive and vulnerable in this card so i don't think that i have anything else for you yeah you have death on the bottom of the card the morris morris means death in latin so yeah there's a lot of um I think you're going to find that a lot of people around you are actually in a lot in a lot more of an open or receptive position to hear your suffering um, and to empathize with your suffering and to make space to um, just accept what's going on for you as well um, and walk with you through that twilight, through that place of transition um, in your life. So... That's all I'm seeing for you, Pile 2. I was so honored and so blessed to have been your reader today. I'm sending you so much love, so much gratitude for being with me today um, and for investing in exploring what these things in life mean. So 
I will see you in another video, my friend. Bye. Greetings, pile three. If you selected this fossil, this is your reading from Apocalyptic Theater, so welcome. Um, in case you didn't make it all the way through the intro, no hard feelings. Um, this is my deck that I have created and I've been spending a while on. Um, it is all in watercolor and ink, um, and it comes with a 380 page guidebook that is both a tarot study, um, kind of contextualizing the tarot's system within the life of Jesus. Um, and don't let that deter you if you are really anti-Christian or don't feel like that's your vibe. Um, I did bring in a lot of other um, religions to kind of analyze Christianity as a social, political, and cultural movement and what those influences are. And so as you'll see here, the Turris Destructa card that you chose is actually in Latin to bring it back into that um, context of the Roman Empire where Jesus would have been an oppressed minority group of the Jewish cult <laughs> at the time. So we're going to look at this in the context of you though, um, pile three. Pile three, I feel that you have recently gone through some kind of spiritual awakening period, as this card suggests. Um, I feel like a lot of you are actually pretty new to spirituality, so there's something about this where you're kind of eager for information, or even if you haven't been intentionally seeking out information on spirituality, um, it's something that you feel yourself naturally drawn towards. So. Um, for a lot of you, this is also opening you up to accessing past lives. Um, that's definitely something I'm picking up with the Taurus Destructa, and I think that's why I wanted to give you a bit more insight into the history aspect of this deck, because I didn't quite introduce it that way for the other piles. Um, so yeah, I want to find something from the guidebook here, from the Taurus Destructa card, so oh, I just saw it. This is also an art book so it does showcase the card so you can get a good look at the image which I really enjoy um but this card represents the time in the Jesus story of the empty tomb so this is where Mary Magdalene comes and actually discovers um that there is no body in the tomb in the myth or in the legend of the Jesus story that we know today um through the Christian canon and Something that I looked at through this was the, um, I guess like the social relationships that um, were there, but I think that's not quite what you need. Here it is. Okay. So that's why I needed to bring up Mary. Um, Mary Magdalene is the first to speak to the angel, which is um, in in this deck is actually the card right before this, which is Typhon Logic um, and the, the Tomb Angel. And that would be in place of the Rider Waite Coleman Smith Devil card. So this would be kind of like the Tower card, as you can tell from Destroyed Tower, Tourist Destructa. Um, there's something about you having faced a lot of demons in the recent past. And um, when, when Mary meets this angel, uh, who is also a director of the astral plane, which if you don't understand the astral plane, that's like the dream plane or the place, um, I believe sometimes like we can access it through meditation, um, prayer, uh, anything that's like kind of surreal, uh, even like I could see it as like being kind of space, like, um, out, out in outer space that could be seen as like the astral. But anyway, um, in the Gospel of Mary, she poses this question to Jesus as this consciousness is, con is contacted beyond the grave. Now, Lord, does the one who sees a vision see it with the soul or with the spirit? The Savior replied, A person does not see it with the soul or with the spirit, but the mind that is between the two is what sees the vision. But the mind that is between the two is what sees the vision. 
it's interesting. Um, and then the, ne the next question, or the next question, <laughs> the next sentence, sorry, is Jesus loved Mary so much. And because of this love, they were able to feel each other beyond the limitations the physical world placed on them. So, for example, death is a limitation of the physical world. It's implied here. Um, this is why I believe this card represents the radical love that is inherent in the intervention or destruction that occurs. Radical love is expressed without conditions or games involved with control and manipulation. Radical love in society is fighting for people and structures which support those who may not be the same as you and meeting people where they are at. The mind that sees between the two is sometimes deemed, deemed as the purest form of love and compassion that which feels spiritually called or inspired. So I feel like the mind that sees between the two um, also kind of represents that, you know, mind of the mind of the brain, mind of the body, mind of the heart. And so there's something about um, maybe you've actually gone through some relationships breaking down in your life. I do actually feel like you've probably had some falling out recently. Um, this could have even been like through a work position or moving. There's some kind of major radical change that's really happened in your life recently, and I do feel like it's left you feeling quite exhausted. Pile three. Ooh. And so this card just wanted to fly. I don't know if you saw it, but this is the Physis card. So this is kind of clarifying where you're moving. And Physis is actually Mary, um, a different Mary. So you have both Marys. Um, interesting. So there's some aspect of, like support from someone who you consider to be a more feminine presence in your life um this may be like actually a friend or um, a partner or a parent um interesting but i also feel like for a lot of you for a good majority of you this talks about an inner parent so this is going to be different um if this is somebody that's around you, it's like their words or their wisdom. This even could be somebody that you haven't talked to. It's just somebody that you think of very often. So, for example, um, my grandmother was somebody that I just felt like I really needed to listen a lot to the things that she said and really absorb them. And even if I didn't apply them into my life, I just felt like it was really important for me to just hold space to um, remember what she was telling me. And so this may even be like someone in your life who's told you things that are really important that you feel like help you in terms of discerning and using your own voice within to become your own parent, like inside, to reparent yourself. And this may mean as well that you have a complicated relationship with um, female figures in your life. Like maybe you had a bad relationship with your mother um, or a grandmother, someone in your life that maybe was um, using like feminine energy in a way that was more controlling manipulative um even like overbearing um and this this can be taken out of that like gendered context of more of like um uh like overgrown if that makes sense like something that's not like um cared for enough like it's neglected to the point where it's um, taking it up too much space in your life as well because this is means nature simply and so there's something about this that feels like um, you're learning how to prune <laughs> especially with this rose being clipped here um, there's something about this where there's a lot of pain that you carry in your body regardless of what like you've been through or if something specifically happened to your body it's not necessarily about like your health um this is more talking about like energetically you may benefit a, quite a bit actually through this transformation process by like booking a massage like i know that that's strange and if you don't have money for that that's okay like even giving yourself a massage there's something about like somatic healing that needs to happen yeah with the page of water so water there's a downward arrow indicating that you know in in inner journey the care for self when we connect to that um grounded reality of like my body who i am how i feel because the page is feeling um as well as water being at an emphasis on the feeling the page of water is somebody that is entirely needing to be in the process with their emotional self. And I actually really do feel like I should 
pull out the guidebook and um, look at that a little bit as well. On the bottom of the deck, I'm going to mention there is the Royal of Water here. So um, it's not that you're immature emotionally. I don't want that to be what's being read into this because I know even for me, like I've studied tarot and sometimes I will pull a page and I'll catch myself being like, oh, I need to, you know, rise up. And it's like the page is a really important role. And I have to remind myself of that sometimes, too, because the page is like that innocence, that um, self that we don't have to discipline <laughs> as much. Or if we do have to discipline them, um, they teach us something about what we want through that process of discipline, if that makes sense. Like there's something about um, honoring the innate like needs and desires that exist and learning how to like put them in the framework that we can handle so for example some of you actually I was feeling at this tourist destructor that there may have been some kind of addiction or addictive behavior and this doesn't have to be something that you would categorize as like a necessarily like a traditional addiction it doesn't have to just be like drugs or you know addiction to like toxic relationships or something that's like you know overtly like negative or seen as negative and even if it is it's not not negative that's part of why I'm trying to explain this out it could even be you know addiction to um, repeating uh, negative affirmations of like unworthiness in your own mind um, experiencing uh, negative like numbing from feeling emotions there's something about like needing to like recognize and just nurture and spend time like literally just like caring for and putting your time and attention on your emotional self and that's what I also feel that's coming from the physis card it is talking about you know giving um and holding space for something that um needs to come into the world and giving to others as well. I feel like you're somebody that really makes sure that other people can exist <laughs> because you're somebody that I feel like a lot of people feel very emotionally safe around. Um, whether you consider yourself to be an emotionally safe person or not, doesn't really matter. Like that's just the energy that people pick up on from you when they're with you. They're like, yeah, like, things aren't that bad, like, the, you know, maybe people in the world are a little less, like, shitty than I thought, like, you're just a person that I think people, um, really like to laugh around, they like to, um, remember that, like, healing is possible, because the page, I, intentionally like showed them as somebody who's wounded they literally have like these like kind of like streams of energy that's maybe even toxic like releasing out into the water around them and so there's something about this where like even if you're releasing things that aren't necessarily what you would want to <laughs> give off I feel like it's necessary um there's an emotional purging that really needs to happen for you and maybe that's like what I was looking for in this um in this card. Yeah, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, there's something about your perception. Hmm. Okay, I think it's a visual symbolism I need to show you. This card's background is a focal point of the card. It is an iris, which is also an ocean, complete with fish. The pupil is at the center, acting as a resting point for the figure, and symbolizes their newfound awareness. The figure is fully immersed in the water, to show that the intuition and emotional body are inescapable at this point in the journey, or to the personality of this person. The figure has a black smoke coming from closing wounds on their body, symbolizing their recovery and releasing of emotions. This figure is letting their old toxins be visible, yet be purged from the body. There is a skeleton of ho a horse in the left corner of this card. Horses symbolize many things, triumph, travel, taming, spirit, and mystical nature. The skeleton animal is a thematic element to this suit because bones create our blood and represent foundations of our bodies, just like the emotions inform our core experiences and spiritual selves. The page represents an introduction to this mysticism. All the things horses also symbolize. The hermetic principle of this card is to know in the suit of water, to know is to be aware of how you feel. 
how your feelings impact the world and beings around you, and to then use that knowledge to care in a way of emotional maturity for the self. To know that emotions, if they are like water, are easily mixed with other things as a solvent, is to know that the nature of feeling is about letting the emotions flow and stop as they need. This is a much more intuitive knowing than other pages, as this knowing comes from finding the spirit or, or metaphysical within one's physical self. Yes, and with the physis here, this is literally talking about a connection to the physical body. So you're, the more that you can tap into the way that the emotions are being expressed through your body, the more that you're going to be able to allow for this um, awakening or this awareness to be integrated through your experience. Because I feel like right now, a lot of the spiritual discovery that you've made exists outside of that grounded, um, how does this affect me in my everyday life? So I'm going to roll this dice that I've included in each of the decks to remedy the absence of an ace through ten pip. So we're going to see what stage the page of water will take you to, and this is an eight. Eights represent um, persistence, perseverance, giving, receiving, the ability to um, expect good when we intend good. Um, that kind of like reciprocal quality of magic. I also feel that there's something about this. This is going to liberate you from some kind of bondage or um, wounding that you felt has held you back from really feeling safe and grounded and connected into your life. And so there's some sense of safety that's coming through and um, provision for like a future that you feel connected to and okay entering into so i want one final card just to close out um, this transformation and yeah this is this royal of fire is reminding that when a fire goes through um there are only certain uh <laughs> how do i describe this like um a forest fire <laughs> sorry i'm there's too many like things coming through or ways to say this but basically um I'm being reminded of a time when I was in, like, middle school, I believe. Um, there was a fire at, like, a camp that I used to go to, and this was, like, a really sacred place to me. And it didn't end up going through the camp, like, thankfully, but it did burn a lot of the mountain that the camp was on. And I remember um, feeling, like, really upset that, you know, my camp was ending early, that I wouldn't be able to spend as much time with my friends, that I wouldn't get that ritual of being where I usually would go for a spiritual retreat and healing in my youth um and that was getting cut short and I felt you know almost cheated by it but I remember looking back um I feel that that was actually a blessing in disguise because there was a lot of stuff that I went through emotionally following that year that I really um needed in terms of like my solitude in terms of um understanding a lot of like trauma that I needed to work through later in my life um and it, not to say that I went through it at that time but it was more of like I picked up on a lot of psychic information like I absorbed it kind of like this page of water and so I do feel like this absorption that is happening this connection to self and you may be a little more introverted than you've ever been and that may confuse you um but it's necessary in order to allow you to like fully transform and go through this cycle um and i feel that there's something about like letting the forest fire happen that like you've already been doing at this current point and so it's gonna it's showing that like there's something absolutely gorgeous that only emerges because of this forest fire um i heard recently actually from another reader um that this metaphor of like the the pine cones these seeds that get dropped some of them will only open and allow themselves to begin to receive nutrients once fire cracks the pine cone open so like there are very select pine cones that are actually meant to open initially when they're dropped and so they'll like remain underground and then turn into new trees when there's been that kind of total destruction and so I feel like that royal fire is showing that, like, your ability to work with destruction or work with the void as the physicist nature can, you know, that unknown, the more that you can 
like work with that kind of chaos that's like within your own being and that um, unpredictability that does exist within this like beautifully designed and undesigned universe the more that you're gonna see something really magical and organic happen for you and you're going to be able to really gain the knowledge and the intellect with that aid that you need um moving forward so that's all i'm seeing for you pile three i know that got a little deep and intense there at the end but i do feel like there's quite a strong transformation happening for you um and you're going to really be able to discover more about your body um and feeling safe in it through this process so thank you so much it was such an honor to read for you i'm sending you so much love um and i will see you in another video my friend bye